Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, today is another incredibly exciting day because DJI just announced their brand new FPV drone. Now, this is going to be a bit of a weird clip because a couple of weeks ago, I got a secret email from DJI saying, Hey, Rick, we have a new project coming out. Would you like to be involved? Of course I'd like to be involved. So I sent him an email and said, please get me involved in that project. So we did the secret NDA handshake and they shipped me a box and I waited and I waited. And this morning, my doorbell rang and out of my front porch was a gigantic box with DJI's logo on it. And I brought it inside and ripped it open. And guess what was inside? The brand new DJI FPV drone kit. It's the starter kit. It's got everything I need for the FPV drone. Now, I haven't opened it yet, but I got this a couple of weeks ago, and the clip you're watching today is weeks later. So I've actually had this for a couple of weeks by the time we're posting this clip because I had to wait till they released the product to actually post this clip. So I've had a couple of weeks of playing with the drone, going through the features and functions of it, and I've got a ton more clips coming. But what I thought I'd do today as opposed to making this a 45 minute clip where you're gonna watch 10 minutes of it and then move on to something else, I would shorten the clip and make this an unboxing, a closer look, and specifications so you understand exactly what comes in the box. You'll get a real close look at all the components that are in there. I'll explain what all the doodads do on the drone, the goggles, and the controller. And then I'll come back and do more in-depth clips on the controller, the drone, the software. I'll do some flying clips because I haven't done a whole lot of flying with it yet because it's brand new. And again, it's still sealed. I haven't opened it yet. Now what's cool about this drone is that it's a brand new class of drone really in the industry. Now, DJI makes phenomenal camera drones. I've got a bunch of them on the shelf behind me. I fly pretty much every model they have, and I love them. Camera drones are the perfect thing to use if you're flying over a field, or you're filming a house, or you want to survey a field to capture some amazing footage because they're incredibly stable. They'll stay level. No matter what you do with the drone, you're going to get rock-solid footage. FPV drones, on the other hand, or first-person view drones, which actually move like a bird. So when you're flying, you can see it, you can do flips, you can come straight down. You can't do any of that with a camera drone. What this DJI FPV drone represents is a marriage of those two technologies. So it's an interesting space because it's really the first drone that you can fly like a regular camera drone, but you can also fly it like an FPV drone. The other big difference is normally when you're flying a camera drone, you're looking at a screen. So it's a bit of an abstract where you're, you're in an environment where you're looking at a screen and that's what you're seeing through the camera. So even though it looks pretty cool, you're not really in the drone. With FPV, you put those goggles on, they're completely immersive. So you're in a virtual reality environment where you're actually strapped to the bottom of the drone. It's like you're Superman flying through the woods and it really is an immersive experience. And if you haven't done it before, take your time because first couple times you do it, you might get a little bit dizzy. I've been flying FPV forever and I like the camera drones for certain reasons. I love the FPV for other reasons. And, and having a drone that I can do both on is absolutely phenomenal. So I can't get over how brilliant this company is when I look at their engineering, their technology, how ahead of the curve they are with a lot of things. And I just can't wait to get this thing up in the air and start flying it. Now it's totally sealed. I haven't charged it yet. I haven't flown it yet. So what I'm going to do today is unbox it, take a closer look at all the components and explain exactly what they do and explain all the knobs and buttons and doodads on them. So you have a real good understanding of what comes in the kit. And then I'll give you the specifications because they've upgraded a ton of stuff on this drone. For example, the drone itself will fly 20 minutes on a full charge. That's unheard of in FPV. Normally you get six to 10 minutes. You got to swap out a battery. So you're constantly landing, taking off, landing, taking off. 20 minutes on a battery, that's insane. 4K 60 frame footage. It doesn't do three axis gable stabilization because with an FPV drone, you're making all kinds of wacky moves and the camera can't keep up with it, but it has a one axis gimbal on it where you can go up and down and it's got electronic image stabilization, which we know they do a phenomenal job of based on their Osmo Action and their Osmo Pocket product. So I'm really looking forward to that. It'll fly <laughs> 10 kilometers. It's based on a brand new version of OcuSync 3.0, which I can't imagine they moved to OcuSync 3.0. They just came out with OcuSync 2.0, but you kind of need that in FPV because if you're in the drone and you're controlling it, you're moving really fast. By the way, this thing goes insanely fast. It's like 87 miles an hour, 140 kilometers an hour. I can't do the conversion in my head. I think it's like, let's just say it's 87 miles an hour. It's just fast, okay? So 140 kilometers an hour, when you're flying that fast, you have to have instantaneous response between the joysticks and what the drone's doing because if you're heading for a tree, you gotta be able to avoid it. So having that kind of instantaneous response is super critical. The product gives you in the goggles, 150 degree field of view. It's not 180, which would be everything. It's 150, which is a really wide expanse. So you can see things coming. You can decide to fly over here. It'll record phenomenal footage, both on the goggles and in the drone. So I just can't wait to get into it. I'm gonna do a whole specification section next, but if I keep talking, I'll never get the box open. So let's tear into it. All right, so <laughs> here we go. All right, so it looks like there's a couple of seals. Where are the seals? Yeah, there's two seals on the side and one seal on the bottom. I've got a nice little letter opener here. So let me break that seal first on the bottom. All right, that's loose. 
Now what else have we got stuck here? All right, that's stuck. And there any on the sides? Yeah, there's one right here. All right, let me get that one open. There's one on this side. Let me get that one open. Are there any on the bottom? Boy, this, oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, the bottom's loose. Oh, still stuck here, so what do we got? We got more over here. Oh, there's another one there. There's one over here. I guess there wasn't any in the ends. Okay, all right, so it's open. Oh man, this is the best part right here. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm a bit of an older guy, but when I get a toy like this, I just have to take a breath because I want to drink in everything that's inside the box. So here we go. <laughs> All right, so here's the drone and it looks like nothing I've ever seen before. I <laughs> it isn't a Mavic that they kind of slapped a couple FPV things on. It's a brand new design. So the engineering team that put this together had to sit down and say, let's start from scratch. We can use some of the guts from other drones, but we're going to redesign it to look like an FPV drone, but it doesn't look like any other FPV drone I own. Most FPV drones are flat. They've got motor sticking on the top with a bunch of antennas popping off them. This looks like a, it's a brand new product. It's phenomenal. And here are the goggles. Oh man. Now, if you've flown with these before, these digital goggles, the version one, these are version two, and they look almost exactly the same, but they've got improved specifications. So it's a dual frequency, whereas the other one, the 2.4, this one's 2.4 and 5.8. So you get both frequencies. With the OcuSync 3, it's going to do frequency hopping, so it's always going to pick the best channel for connection between your goggles and the drone. But man, lightweight, really nice. I can't wait to play with these. Let's see what else is in the box, because there's got to be more stuff to get this foam out of here. Boy, it's really nice, too, that they made this foam perfectly contoured for the stuff. So I guess you could throw it back in the box and actually keep it in there when you're not flying it. There is no bag associated with it, so maybe they've got a kit coming with a bag as well. All right, down in the bottom, there's the remote controller. <laughs> Again, it's a beauty. There's the antenna pops up like that. There are your joysticks. And those hide down in the bottom. So the joysticks are on there already. That's interesting. But I did get a pre-release model, so maybe somebody put this together for me. But normally the joysticks look like they hide down in the bottom. And I've got a lanyard clip right here so I can put a lanyard on it and not drop it. That's really nice that they thought of that. All right, so there's the controller. We put that aside. What else is in the box? All right, there's a box here which has got propeller insignia on it. So here are the propellers. Actually, there are four propellers that have red tips on them. And yep, the... Uh, the motors have different colors, so there's a red. Let me do it better than that. Hold on a second. I'm too excited here. Let me get these rubber things off. All right, so there's a red propeller. It says B, so you want to line up the red propeller with the red motor. You can take these stickers off. Don't forget to take the stickers off. All right, so that's the red propellers. I mean, here's another box. These are probably going to be the other propellers. And there's some more propellers. And interestingly, these have red on them as well, so i got to figure out what's going on there. There may be another box in there, or maybe they ship me propellers that are all the same propeller, which would be terrible because I want to fly this thing today. All right, let's see what else we got in the box. All right, on this side, oh man, let's see. There's some pictures on there. Boy, a whole bunch of cables and stuff. Let's get this guy open and see what's inside here. All right, so in here, I've got, oh wow, a cool, a new, oh, a hood for the top. All right, let me open this guy up. So there's a different color hood for the top, and I guess that's in case I'm flying with somebody else that's flying a drone like this. That way we can tell the difference if we're racing or we're going around. I'll know one is black like this and the other one's green like that. Kind of cool. That's high uh, visibility green as well. What else we got here? Let's see. Let me open this guy up. Okay. Oh, this is the strap for the goggles. Okay, so there's the attachment for the goggles. That's great. Let me get this guy out of the way. What else have I got? Oh, man, a ton of manuals. I'll have to go through those. And a bunch of cables and a bunch of other stuff. So there's desiccant. Make sure you throw this out if you've got pets that are gonna eat it or small kids. Don't let them eat the desiccant. Make sure you throw that out. All right, so let's see what else we got. Before I open up the rest of the box, I've got two cables here. This one looks like a USB-C on one end and obviously the cable that plugs into the goggles on the other, it's a barrel connection. And then this other one I have here is an interesting one because it's USB-C Wow, look at that. I think it's a USB-C to USB-A. Yep, USB-C to USB-A, so it's gonna be for charging something. Now, I didn't take the battery out of this yet, but there's gotta be a charger to charge that battery. That's a massive battery. Let's see how that comes out of there. Looks like a connector on the top. Oh, there's two little wings on the bottom, and you pull it out that way. Boy, that's a massive battery. That, that's gotta be 25% of the drone, just the size of that battery, but that's why you're getting 20 minutes of flight time out of it. So, it snaps in, you hear it click, and then you pop those two connectors in on top and you're good to go. All right, let's see what else is in the box. There better be a charger in here someplace. All right, that's the last box in the box. So let me close this up, just set it aside for now, and we'll get into here. This looks like the charging system, so let me get all this stuff out of the way, which would be interesting, and see what's in here. All right, that looks like a battery, and then there's some more stuff that's not coming out, so let's try the other end. This is all an experiment because I haven't opened it yet, as I mentioned. So, okay, oh, oh, there goes the charging brick, and that's just an empty box. And this looks like 
a battery, and that's an empty box. So, man, I got a lot of boxes. All right, let me tear this guy open. This is probably the battery for the goggles. Yep, it is. And it's nice that they didn't put the battery in the goggles because a lot of times if you're flying like the Fat Shark, some of the older versions of the, of the goggles, they've got a battery on the strap. And it tends to be a little weird to have this battery on your head. So having the goggles on your head means it's balanced, it's nice and tight. You have a cord that's going down to your pocket to hold the battery and you plug it in there. So I imagine you can get extra batteries as well if you need those. All right, so the charging brick, a pretty standard AC plug on one end. It's got two connections there. On the other end, I've got a custom connector that can charge one battery, one single battery. Now I know they're coming out with a hub that'll charge multiple batteries. So that's something you may want to consider if you're going to be swapping batteries out because 20 minutes seems like a long time, but it's really not that long when you get it up in the air and flying around. You're going to want more time. And in this end, there are two USB-A connections here. I'm sure that those can be used to charge the battery for the goggles and the controller. Let's see what kind of charging port is on the controller. USB-C. So everything in this kit is a USB-C charge, except for the battery, obviously, for the FPV drone. But that's a good thing because F the uh, USB-C is the latest standard that everybody's using out there for charging all the newer electronics, which means you can throw out all your old micro USB cables if you're operating the system and just worry about USB-C. All right, so that's pretty much it for the kit. Now, I got to figure out this propeller thing because, man, that's worrying me a little bit. To <laughs> and how terrible would it be to have the drone and not have all the propellers to fly it? But there's more stuff in the box that I haven't opened up yet. There's another box coming with some other cool stuff in it so i'm sure the propellers are on their way but next what i'm going to do is take a closer look at the drone the goggles and the controller and some of the accessories just to explain what they do and show you a little closer view of how you plug them together and what all the buttons and doodads do i'm also going to give you the specifications because i don't want to run through those quickly because there's some pretty amazing things that this drone provides that i want to make sure you understand and i promise you I'm going to take it out as soon as I get done with this clip, charge everything up, take it out and start flying it. So I'll put a separate clip up for my first flight with some flight footage. And if I get a chance to fly it today before, before the sun goes down, I'll actually add some flight footage at the end of this. So stay tuned next for the closer look, and then I'll do the specifications. And I'll probably come back with a couple of final thoughts after I get a chance to read through the manuals and play with it a little bit, because there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's going to take me a little time to unpack it, but I want to take my time so I can explain it to you so you understand exactly what this product provides, because... <laughs> As a nerd, this is like a Martian mission kind of thing, right? It's not just a standard drone with a similar controller. It's a brand new system. And it's important we understand exactly what they give you so that you can fly it safely and get the most enjoyment out of it. So stay tuned. And next, I'm going to do the closer look, and then I'll do the specifications. The kit I just unboxed is called the DJI FPV Combo, and it includes everything you see right here in front of me on the table, which is pretty much everything you need to fly this drone right out of the box. Now, I'm sure that DJI is going to release other kits with various combinations of these components later on, but for today, I'd like to focus on the FPV Combo, because everything you need to get this drone up in the air is included with this kit. Now, inside the kit, you'll find three main components. The FPV goggles, these are the version two of the digital goggles, the brand new FPV drone, and the new controller, and a whole lot of other accessories you'll use with these three components to get this drone airborne. Inside the kit, you'll find four antenna, which screw onto these antenna studs on the goggles, a strap to hold it on your head, a battery for the goggles, power button on this end, USB-C connection on this end, and this is all the power you'll need to operate those goggles. You'll also find a power cord, which has a barrel connection on this end, which plugs into the goggles, and a USB-C on this end, which actually plugs into the port on the battery. You'll also find an adapter cable. This plugs into the goggles and allows you to connect your phone up to this end of it. So this end is a USB-C that plugs into the goggles. This end has a female USB-A on it, and you'll use the cable from your phone to plug it in here, and then run the DJI Fly app on your phone and connect this up to the goggles. You'll also find a power brick that's used to charge the battery in the drone with this specialized connector. It also has two full-size USB-A ports on it that you can use with the included cables to charge this battery and charge the controller. You'll find an AC cord for the power brick. This is just a standard plug here that'll plug into any standard wall outlet with a dual prong on the other end to plug into the brick. And you'll find another cable here, which is a USB-A on this end and a USB-C on the other end. And again, this can be used to charge the battery or can be used to charge the controller. I think it's really nice that they include all these extra cables because even though you may have a couple of cables at home, having a heavy duty cable like this in the kit means you can keep it all together and you know you always have the parts you need to charge up your quad. All right, you also get four propellers that are red here and four propellers that aren't red here. And that gives you a set of propellers for the quad and a spare set of propellers just in case you crash it. You'll find a replacement hood, and this is really nice because it allows you to personalize your drone, especially if you're flying with somebody else, it's easy to tell the difference between them. You'll find the controller, a spare set of joysticks, an Allen wrench, and I wondered what that was for initially, and if you look closely on the quad, you'll see there are Allen screws right here. 
that allow you to take the hood off. And if you have to do repairs, you can actually use it to loosen up the hood. It's also used with the controller because when you move into manual mode, you don't want to have the spring loaded joysticks. Any FPV flyer out there will tell you that they want the joysticks loose so they can move them as they need to. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But underneath, you can actually pull the rubber pads off the bottom and adjust the joysticks so they don't have that spring action in there. And you'll find two manuals, a quick start guide, and a warranty and safety guidelines that talk about how to charge the batteries and how to protect your drone and all the good things you need to do to keep your drone in the best shape possible. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'll take a closer look at the goggles and its accessories, the drone and its accessories, and the controller. Now I'll take a closer look at the DJI FPV Quad. And the first thing you'll probably notice is the tri-blade design. Now this is fairly new for DJI, but it's really common on other FPV drones, but it does look like DJI's modify the end of these propellers slightly to incorporate some of their high efficiency, low noise technology that they originally pioneered on the Mavic product. So we'll have to see how that affects the efficiency and the noise level when we're flying. Now, as I'd mentioned, there are two different styles of propellers. One set has red markings on the top of it, and the other one has no markings on the top. And it's really important you match up the one with red marking on a motor with red marking. And again, these should be across from each other. And the ones with no marking on a motor with no marking, and they'll be across from each other. And the way you change those props, you'll hold the base, push down on the prop, and spin the base. And it'll actually pop off the base. And then you can pull it off, put a new prop on there. And this spring is really substantial. So you want to line up those slots, push down on it gently, don't wrestle with it too much, and spin it, and it'll lock in place. And when it locks, you know you've really got it down there. And that's important because this thing's whipping through the air. So you want those props to stay where you put them. On the top of the quad, you'll see a plastic hood up here, electronics underneath there. And if you want to remove that to replace it with the green one that comes with the kit, and again, if you're flying with somebody or you're racing, you may want to change this out or maybe just want to make your quad look a little cooler, <laughs> you can actually swap it out for the green one. And the way you'll do that is to use the included Allen wrench and you can loosen these two bolts here, these two bolts, two more on this side, two more on the other side. This pops off. You can pop this one on, put the bolts back in and you're good to go. Now you'll notice a heat sink on the back and it feels aluminum there, and that's a pretty substantial heat sink because I imagine it generates a lot of heat when it's flying. And there's ventilation on the front to pull cool air across that electronic section inside there and out the back. And they've actually cut channels into the heat sink here to direct the airflow to the sides and back so that it's spreading the heat out as it comes out the back of the quad. So pretty cool there. Now let's take a look at the battery next. Pretty substantial battery back here, and you'll notice the connection up top. So to remove the battery, you'll pull this out first, just wiggle it out. And then to release the battery, there are two latches, one here and one on the other side. You pull back on those and the battery slides out of the unit. Now what's different about this, a couple of things. Number one, it's gigantic compared to the quad. As I said, I think it's a quarter or a third the size and weight of the quad. And to slide it back in, you'll line up the channel, slide it in the quad, and when you push in, you'll hear it click closed. Another thing that's different is with most DJI quads, the connections for the batteries are on the front. So when you slide it in, you're actually making the connection. Here you mount it first and you make the connection up top by plugging this back in right there and then that connection's in. Intelligent flight battery, it's gonna control how it's discharged and how it's charged when you're charging it. All right, so let's take a look at the bottom of the quad next. I wanna show you some of the sensors. So they've built in a couple of protection sensors. You've got optical sensors here and infrared sensors there. So they have both time of flight and VIO sensors built in. You'll notice a landing light right there. And then there are two more sensors, optical sensors on the front. So it has a level of crash avoidance where if it's approaching something in certain flight modes, it'll actually slow down so it doesn't crash into something. So it gives you a couple of seconds to adjust. Now you also notice a little door right here underneath. You pop that open, what you'll find inside there is a micro SD card slot right there for recording. So you can pop a micro SD card in, record right from the drone. To the left of that is a USB-C connection, and that can be used with a cable to connect to your computer to push firmware to it using the DJI Assistant, or if you need to move those files off the SD card, connect it to your computer and you can transfer them that way. I like to pop the SD card out and use an adapter. It's a lot faster, I think, than transferring it over that connection. All right, let's take a look at the camera next. There's a gimbal lock and protector on the front, and it would look like you just squeeze on the sides and pull it off, but you can't because the motor's over here. So you'll put your thumb underneath and gently pry it off like that. Now, I promise you that cracking noise isn't something that's breaking with it. It is kind of uh, unsettling when you do it, but it makes that noise every time I pulled it off. And then inside there, you'll find the camera, again, a 4K camera and a single axis gimbal. Now I'd mentioned before that it can't have a three axis gimbal because the quad when it's flying is making all kinds of really radical movements. It's starting, it's stopping, it's banking real hard. It's hard for a three axis gimbal to keep up with that. So you've got a stabilized gimbal with electronic image stabilization built in and a single axis movement in this direction so you can move the camera up and down as you're flying. So that's pretty cool. 
Then the last thing I wanted to mention was to put this back on, you've got to be a little bit gentle. The way I found it works best is to line the camera up with the gimbal guard like this. I don't really get it yet. There we go. Plug in the top and then gently close the bottom and you'll hear a click and that's pretty much it. And that's all there is to it. There's a couple of indicator lights on the back, a couple of lights along here, which is nice. On the front, you've got indicator lights on here and you've got indicator lights on the back over here. So when you're flying this thing, I mean, you've got plenty of lights up in the sky and it's easy to see it. And all those indicator lights really help as well as the landing light in the bottom. So when you're coming down, you can turn on the landing light or put it in automatic mode. I guess it'll turn on when you're landing. And that's pretty much it for the quad. Now I'll take a closer look at the FPV goggles, and there's some components that are included with the kit that work with the goggles, so I'll explain what they do as well. And I'll start with the antenna. I mentioned there are four antenna included with the kit, and you'll have to install those on the goggles before you can use them. And the way you do that is just line up the threads with the antenna post and spin them on gently, and then finger tighten them down. Don't crank down on these because you can crack the connection underneath. The other thing I want to point out is that there's a lot of torque on these. So if you throw these in a backpack and something bangs up against these, there's a good chance you can crack the board underneath. So my recommendation is when you're gonna fly, put them on. When you're done for the day, pull them off, put them in your bag and you'll be good to go. There's also a strap included that holds this to your head. It's a three point attachment. And you wanna make sure that you line up the long strap with the top buckle and the shorter straps with the side buckles. And if you forget, like me, you can look at the DJI logo, point that at the goggles and you'll be lined up perfectly. And this has got a lot of adjustments, so you can adjust it to make it comfortable on your head. You'll also find a battery included with the kit. And this is a very specialized battery that should only be used with the goggles. As I'd mentioned, if you look at the USB-C connection on the side, there are little like ribs that run along either side. And the plug that connects it to the goggles have little channels on either side that match up with those ribs. And I think that's to prevent you from plugging a standard USB-C cable in here and trying to charge a phone. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Only use this with the goggles. But again, the battery will let you run these goggles a very long time on a full charge. Also included is a cable that has that specialized USB-C connection, which plugs into here, and a barrel connection on the other end, which plugs into the goggles. I'll show you where that is in a minute. And this is long enough where you can have the battery in your pocket, have the goggles on, and not have this big battery sort of weighing down the goggles. So nice job on that. You'll also find another attachment where you plug this into the goggles. You'll plug the cable from your phone in this end, a USB-A connection to your phone, and that's where you'll run the DJI Fly application that you'll use in conjunction with the goggles. So that dongle's included as well. All right, so let's take a look at the goggles. Uh, at first glance, you'll notice venting on the top and venting on the bottom as well, and that's to keep the fog down inside and cool the electronics. On the top, you'll also notice some controls. There's a 5D joystick right here that allows you to move around through the menus inside when you're actually making adjustments. You'll see a record button and a back button. Again, the back button will help you with the programming. The buckles are pretty tightly attached there. I mean, they're not going anywhere, so you're gonna have a nice secure fit on your head. On the one side, not a whole lot to see over there. On the bottom of that side, you'll see two connections. This is the barrel connection for the power port. Plug it in there. The one above it is an audio for a headset. So you can connect the headset up there. If you're playing media on here, you can listen to it. I'm not sure yet if we're recording or actually transmitting the audio from the drone. I know that was a concern with the FPV system initially. If you're flying FPV, you really like to hear the motor on that FPV drone so you know if there's some issues before it actually has problems. So we'll have to test that and see if that works. That's the reset button. So if you need to resync this, use a pen, pop that, just gently pop that, and you can actually reset it from there. On the other side are two more connections. There's a micro SD card slot right there where you can put a memory card in here and record from the goggles. And there's the USB-C connection you use with the dongle to connect up to your phone. On the bottom, you'll see two sliders, and these control the IPD distance, which is that interpupillary distance, because everybody's eyes are different spacing apart. Now, I have very wide eyes. I have a pretty wide head, so I have to slide them way out. Some other people have eyes that are a little closer, so you slide them in, but put the goggles on. When you bring up the main menu, slide these into position to get the exact right IPD adjustment for your head, and you're gonna be in really good shape. And that's pretty much all there is to see. There's not a whole lot more in adjustments, but, oh wait, one more thing. You can adjust the frequency, so you have control over the digital frequency. If you wanna modify this and use it with other drones, I imagine, or if you wanna change things, here's your up and down buttons and the display for the frequencies. And that's pretty much it for the goggles. Now I'll take a closer look at the FPV controller and the two components you'll use with it. The controller itself is a brand new design for DJI, and honestly, it looks a lot like a game controller. It's very comfortable in your hands, and the balance is really good, and the joysticks fall naturally under your thumbs just where you'd like them. 
On the top of the controller, there are two buttons and a lanyard hook in the center. The button on the right is a power button. You'll use that to turn the controller on. You'll tap it and hold it just like you do with all the DJI products. The lights will strobe up and it'll come on. If you want to check the charge level of the controller, you can tap it once. These will light up, each of these representing 25% of charge. So in my case, I'm fully charged. If three were lit up, it'd be 75%, 50, and 25. The hook in the center is nice because you can clip a lanyard on there. And that way, if you have to do something with your hands, you can let this drop. It's going to hang around your neck. It's not going to hit the ground. On the left, you've got a C1 button. That's a programmable button that you can control what it does in the software. So you can program that to do a bunch of different things. And you can make it custom for your own needs. You tap that button, it'll do what you tell it to. On the bottom, you'll find a USB-C connection in the middle. That's a port you can use for charging it. The included cable has a USB-A on this end and a USB-C on this end. You'll plug this into the controller. This gets plugged into the power charging brick, and you'll charge the controller through that. You can use any standard USB-C cable, but it's nice to include one with the kit. It takes about two hours, two and a half hours to fully charge the controller if it's really depleted, and then you'll get a lot of flying time out of it. You'll also find two little spots here where you can hide the joysticks when you put this away for the afternoon. These joysticks come off, and I'm not a fan of pulling the joysticks off because <laughs> I have really fumbly fingers, and a lot of times I'll take them off, try to put them back on, and I'll drop them in tall grass and then spend the next two hours trying to find them. Um, so I leave them on all the time, but if you'd like to take them off, you can pop them in down here. If you do lose them, and I will lose them, I've got two extras that come with the kit, so it's nice to know I've got extra ones in case I do lose them. All right, on the top, this is the antenna. Right now, it's in the stored position, so when you put it away for the day, that's what it should look like. When you're flying, you want to flip this up, and you want this end of it to face the quad, so you want to make sure you try to zero in on where that quad is in the air, and that's the antenna. It'll actually broadcast downfield. On the back, there's a lot of different buttons. Probably the most important button on this remote controller, I call it the emergency stop button. It's a halt and hover button, which means when you're flying the quad and you get into trouble where you're getting close to a tree or you're a little bit afraid of what's going on, you can tap that. The quad will immediately halt in midair and hover wherever it is. And then you can take control over it again. It's also a double function button because you see that little circle with the H in it? If you hold this button, it'll trigger a return to home. So if you're lost out there somewhere in the wilderness and can't find your quad, hold that. It'll return to home and land pretty much where it took off. Right here is your mode selection button. I've got it in normal mode now. The middle is sport mode and the bottom is manual mode, which is the full-on FPV mode. So normal, it'll fly pretty much like a Mavic. In the middle, it'll fly like a hybrid, somewhere between a Mavic and an FPV. And all the way down is in manual mode, where it'll fly like an actual FPV. Now, the thing is, they're really cautious about going into manual mode, so just flipping it into manual mode won't actually allow you to fly it at 87 miles an hour. You actually have to unlock it, and you do that by hitting this button. So to get into manual mode, you've got to click down, hit this button, and then it'll go into manual mode. On this side, you're gonna find a three position rocker that's programmable as well. So in addition to the C1, you can program all three of these settings on this side in the software. To the right of that is the picture and video recording button. So you can switch between the two and that'll actually start the recording or it'll take a picture. And down here is the gimbal control where you can tilt the gimbal up and down on that quad. Now, if you wanna change the joysticks from the spring loaded like I've got to more of an FPV model, you can see there are two little arrows right here that tell you you can peel these back. And I don't know if I can do it with my fingernails or not. I might need to use the, let me use this because it's what I'm gonna adjust it with. So you can get the Allen wrench underneath there and actually peel this back a little bit. And then once it's open, there are two adjustments right here, F1 and F2. And what you'll do is put this down and you'll loosen one of them and then loosen the other one. One controls the tension of how that joystick moves. The other one takes the spring loading off of it. And once you've made that adjustment, you can close it up like this, snap it back in, and you're ready to start flying. So you don't have to do that adjustment that often, but if you're flying FPV all the time, you'll probably leave it in FPV mode, which means the joysticks will come down and stay there. But if you're flying it like a regular quad when you first start flying the FPV drone, you might want to leave it with the center position, spring load it like that so it returns to center. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the controller. The new DJI FPV drone sports a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor that can capture stunning 4K footage at 60 frames per second. Its advanced Rocksteady electronic image stabilization provides crisp images and smooth video of your flights with its 150 degree ultra wide field of view. The larger 25.2 volt 2000 milliampere hour battery provides a full 20 minutes of flight time on a single charge and enables the drone to reach speeds of 140 kilometers per hour. The system also features the very latest OcuSync 3.0 transmission technology for an astounding 10 kilometers of flight distance and incredibly low latencies of less than 28 milliseconds. The DJI FPV drone is also very beginner friendly and can be flown in one of three modes. 
N or normal mode, where it uses GPS, VIO, and TOF sensors to steady the quad. This allows flyers that are new to FPV flying some time to get used to the flight characteristics of the quad. It will fly like other Mavic Series quads with speeds up to 14 meters per second. When you're ready to have a little bit more fun, you can switch the drone into S or sport mode to increase its speed and banking ability. This mode is a bit of a hybrid between conventional DJI quads and a pure FPV drone. It allows you more control over the pitch and roll in flight and increases the maximum speed to 27 meters per second. Once you're totally comfortable flying in S mode, you can switch into M or manual mode for the full FPV experience. In this mode, you'll have total control over banking and turning at high speed, and the drone will fly like a true FPV quad with a top speed of 39 meters per second. The DJI FPV also includes several important safety features to make it easy to fly. There is a break and hover button on the controller that will hold the drone mid-flight, as well as a return to home feature to ensure it makes it back safely to its takeoff point. It even includes launching and landing assistance to help you get the drone airborne. The new DJI FPV goggles are the second generation of this lightweight digital headset. It comes paired with the quad to make flying really easy right out of the box. The unit offers a full 150 degree field of view for your flights to provide the most immersive experience possible. Its three point head strap comfortably secures it while flying. The FPV goggles are powered by a 7.2 volt 2500 milliampere hour battery for extended flight time on a single charge. They also provide upgraded dual frequency OcuSync 3.0 transmission technology that communicates on both the 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz bands for unbridled connectivity. Their video capabilities have also been increased and they can now display 810p video at 120 frames per second. Transmission distance has also been extended to an amazing 10 kilometers with less than 28 millisecond delay. The goggles feature a micro SD card for internal recording of your footage, as well as buttons for adjusting the transmission channel frequency if needed. There are also IPD sliders on the bottom of the system to allow for custom interpupillary distance adjustment to dial in the perfect image for your vision. The DJI controller is an updated design that offers a wide range of control over the quad during flight. Its OcuSync 3 connection technology provides an incredibly low latency of 7 milliseconds between joystick movements and reactions from the quad to enable a very controlled flight. The controller features a set of spring-loaded joysticks for use in both normal and sport modes and an adjustment to full motion when flying in manual mode to ensure a full FPV experience. Switching between these various modes is easy and can be done using the three-position rocker switch on the controller. The charging time for the controller is about two and a half hours, and a full charge will provide about nine hours of use. You also have total control over recording by using the buttons on the remote to snap a picture or capture some video. The FPV controller is paired with the drone from the factory to allow you to power up and start flying right out of the box. I hope the closer look at all of the components included with the kit, plus those specifications, have really helped you understand the magic behind this system, because what DJI's done here is actually built an FPV ecosystem that any pilot out there that's flying a drone today that's the least bit curious about flying FPV can buy this product, slap on the goggles, put the drone up, and immediately start flying FPV. And it's really a nice system because you can dive into that FPV world at your own pace. So when you first start flying the quad, you're gonna fly it in normal mode. Now that's gonna fly a lot like a camera drone for you. It's gonna have a little bit more move to it, but it's gonna fly pretty stable. The beautiful part about that is you can get used to the whole virtual reality experience because everything here is new to you, right? The goggles are gonna be new flying in VR mode. Flying in FPV is gonna be new. It's a new controller. So take your time, stay in normal mode for a while, get a real feel for how the drone handles in the air. And then when you feel brave and you've got some experience under your belt, you can move into sport mode. Now what that's gonna do is loosen up the banking a little bit. So you've got a lot more control. You're getting closer to an FPV flight at that point. Flying sport mode for a long time. Get really good at spinning around, coming back, going out. Make sure you get your handle on what's going on when you're flying in sport mode. And when you feel totally comfortable, <laughs> you can take the handbrakes off at that point and go into manual mode. And then you're flying an FPV quad. And again, the beautiful part about that is I know a lot of people who fly camera drones are curious about FPV, but building an FPV drone 
you know, as an engineer and a nerd, it takes time. You got to learn ESCs. You got to learn batteries. How do we put the frame together? Where do the motors go? What's the wiring look like? And then once you master that and you figure out how to bind it to a controller, you get out there in the park and you fly it. I guarantee you the first couple of months you're flying, you're going to crash into stuff all the time, mostly the ground or a tree. And, and you're going to spend more time <laughs> rebuilding the drone than you are flying the drone. And it's a hard lesson to learn with this one. It's ready to fly right out of the box. So you pop a battery and you put it up and you can fly. When you get good at this, maybe then you dive into other FPV products that are out there and you're not buying an entry level drone here. It's not some starter kit where you can get up in the air and try it a little bit. This is a professional FPV drone. Again, it flies 87 miles an hour. So it's incredibly fast. Plus it's got all kinds of safety features built into it. It's got a beautiful camera with electronic image stabilization. So you're getting a high end system here that again, flies like a regular drone initially, but you can slowly make it an FPV drone. So I think it's a brilliant product. And I use that word a lot when I'm talking about DJI and I know people out there are going to say, Rick, you're crazy for DJI. DJI or DJI fanboy, I am because of stuff like this. None of this stuff existed until they came out with this product. Okay, the goggles did, but this is the V2 version of the goggles. This is brand new from the ground up. This is brand new from the ground up, sort of. So all of this is brand new and it's going to take me a little time to unpack it. I promise you, I have a lot more clips that I'm working on right now where I'll come back and spend a lot of time in the goggles, the drone, the controller, and a whole lot of other things around the software, the simulator, and all the other things that are coming. And, and I also, I don't know if I can talk about this yet, but I also have another package coming, which has got another new product in it that I expect to arrive tomorrow. So if that's announced as well, I'll have a clip ready on that. So I'm teasing you a little. I don't think I'm violating my NDA, but stay tuned for that. That's going to be pretty cool. Oh, one thing I forgot. I goofed on the blades. So the props, props have red tips on them. And the reason they have red tips on them, just like with the Mini 2, is that when they spin, you can see the outside circumference of where the blades are. So you're not getting too close to the blades. The red part is on here, right here. And again, Bad on me, but this is what happens when you're working without a net. It's the first time I opened it up. I have never seen this drone before, so I wanted to correct that. You want to make sure the red ring goes on the red motors, not the red tips because they're on all of them. So I did get all the props I needed and I was able to put them on the drone. So that's all I had for today. I really appreciate you guys watching. Now, if you're interested in this kit, I have a link below that'll take you to DJI's website. If you want to support the channel, use that link. We get a little credit from DJI. I would really appreciate that if you did it. But again, I love putting these kind of clips together and I am, I am so excited. I'm like a nine-year-old at Christmas. I'm going to charge this thing up, get outside and fly like crazy with it for the next couple of days. It's the middle of the winter here in Jersey. So we got some snow and winter weather coming, but I'm going to have it up and have a lot of footage. So stop back in the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down there. What are you waiting for? We got a ton more clips coming on drones and other high tech gear that you're not going to want to miss. And we're having a heck of a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these clips and until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.